Привет, друзья! Сегодня снова пятница, значит, в эфире Agile Friday. Сегодня у меня очень специальный гость. Это Олаф Левиц. Олаф, hi here. We just uh, speaking after the conference, and for today I have a, like a very deep topic for our discussion with you. Uh, what is what is your uh, the title of your speech on the conference? If Agile is the solution, I want my problem back. Yeah, that's a great topic I want to discuss uh, with you today because when you read it, it's like, okay, this looks like Agile is not the solution. Yeah. So what is the Agile about then, right? So uh, you are like the veteran of Agile in the world, right? How many years you are with this? I don't think I'm the veteran. I'm one of the veterans. One probably. of. Jutta said yesterday she started in 1997 with XP. I started in 1999. Uh-huh, so 20, 20 years now. Oh, that, um, that, that's fantastic experience. Where did you work? How many companies? Um, I started as a software developer. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was reading about XP on the C2 wiki at the time, where Kent Beck and the others mm -hmm. were developing it. And uh, to me, it just seemed like the first sensible description of software development that I had ever found. Mm -hmm. It was. Uh, I had I I have never written software to an existing specification. I've never worked on a project mm. with a gun chart. I've I've always been agile. Agile from the um, from scratch. And the whole so idea of software engineering, mm -hmm. the very metaphor of engineering for software development, mm -hmm. never worked for me. So I was I was discovering that together with a few colleagues. And we're like, oh, this is almost what we're doing. Uh, this makes so much sense. And then a year later. In 2000, I was asked to become head of IT in a company in Hamburg. Mm -hmm. And part of that job was introducing a new method for their That's software for development. They had been growing and they had cover coding, chaos stuff. And I presented the white book that had just come out to my boss and said, this mm -hmm. is what we're going to do. And he said, extreme what? programming? That sounds weird. <laughs> but I hired you because I trust you, so go uh -huh. ahead. Uh, so we, I think we were one of the first three companies in Germany introducing XP okay. in 2000. And uh, that was a great experiment. Uh, after that, I became a consultant, uh, done lots of other things as well, but always kept doing Agile in, in different ways, introducing Agile to companies, to teams. Um, and in my consultant career, I've seen hundreds of organizations. So I've seen a lot, mm -hmm. done a lot. I've been an Agile coach since 2010, 2011. Um, and what I'm seeing now, so th this this title came out of a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I start somewhere else. A few years ago, a friend of mine had a had a conference talk at the Big Agile conference. I think it was 2014. Martin mm -hmm. Kearns from Australia, and one of his slides said, uh, "Whenever somebody says that's not agile, mm -hmm. the fairy dies." And I was like. That's, re that's a real problem, that people are labeling something as not agile, agile. or that they label something as agile. agile yeah. Because agile is not a label for something. Like It's, it's not about doing post-its or doing Kanban boards or doing Scrum or whatever. It's, it's, it's never about being or doing agile. It's, it's, it's been about agile improvement. It's about regularly getting better. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's always been about curiosity, about humility, about understanding the system. And uh, I kept using that quote with a fairy for years, especially in my trainings where I wanted to tell people, um, like, Agile is not the point. The point is that we're looking at what works, that we're looking at what doesn't, that we're looking at what we want, that we're looking at what our um, product is, what our customers want, etc., and that we continually learn and improve. That's, mm -hmm. that's the point. And, uh, Many people reading the manifesto don't, don't actually read the first line. We are doing it and helping others do it. And over the years, I've seen more and more people in the Agile community not actually doing it themselves. And I'm not talking about developing software. I used to be a software developer. I know how to do that. But I know very, very good people in the Agile community uh, who have never been software developers and who do great things with teams and organizations. Um, I do think this is about more than software, but it's definitely about people doing it and helping others do it, not people telling others how to do it. And uh, I see very few agile mm -hmm. consultancies, like agile organizations that uh, actually improve their business model, that actually do active customer, customer development and, and all of this. I see a lot of solution selling. 
and uh, I've, I've done that myself. I'm, I'm, I'm part of this group. I'm part. Of, I've been part of the problem yeah, most of, of my a career. A lot of the problems actually and, the consultant made. And uh, when we look at the current way agile is perceived, the current way like you, you read big and uh, thousands of times retweeted blog posts like agile is broken, agile is dead. Um, almost every organization I go into. And I'm when I'm introduced as an agile coach, I don't label myself that actively anymore. But when I'm introduced as an agile coach, people come with like, ooh, ooh, you're, he's, no, no, he's, no, going no, to, no. he's going to tell us <laughs> to do Scrum. Um, people are actually afraid. And I think so. I, I think they are for a reason. When we, when we look at uh, the community, um, we are lacking respect. Um, that's one of the key things that I think we are missing. Um, respect for ourselves like looking at our integrity regarding how agile are we and how agile do we tell others to be. Um, respect for our customers, for the way that they became successful, the way they work, for labeling, la labeling lots of things as uh, that's not agile, that's not people oriented, uh, that's waterfall, whatever. And even within our community, like when you see how the less and safe or scrum and Kanban communities are fighting, fighting against each other. other and instead of looking at, okay, what do we both want to bring to the world? Like that's 98% of what we're doing. That's something that we want to bring to the planet. And instead we're fighting about the 2% difference seriously. Um, and then when we look at what we're doing, um, the popular things that we're selling, like Spotify, save less. Spotify is a company that's never made an euro in, in its existence. Uh, safe and less both come from two different huge projects at Nokia that were 10 years ago. And we all know what happened to Nokia. Yeah. Um, and um, all of these contain great ideas. I don't want to diminish the value um, of, of the frameworks, although Spotify is not a model and not a framework, yeah. but that's a different story. That's a different story, yeah. But if, if people come to us in a bank uh, or an insurance, big insurance company and they say, hey, this is what we want to do, is this seriously what we're selling? Is this seriously what we're doing? Right? We, we, we have, I know of one scaled success story of one company that has transformed from whatever we call the other thing to agile and has sustained for more than 10 years. That's ING. Mm -hmm. I don't know of any other case study that's successful. Mm -hmm. um, we can't even really claim that this stuff works. Yeah. We know it does in new organizations. We know uh, that there are organizations where Agile is kind of part of the DNA and just everything flows. Um, but the change is something that we're really not good at. And uh, on the other hand, there are track records of transforming organizations. There are organizations that have sus sustainably and radically transformed their culture. And we're just, we're just, we as software developers grown up, and, and calling ourselves coaches and leadership experts and whatnot, we, we go around the planet and say, oh yeah, we now, now we need agile leadership. I, I am doing agile leadership courses. <laughs> so again, I'm, I'm, part of, I'm part of this system. But imagine how, how condescending it is for an, a, a software person to come, now I'm going to tell the world how leadership is supposed how to leadership be. How leadership works. Yeah. <laughs> As, as if like the, the leadership, if you read good leadership books from the 50s or 60s or 70s, they all tell the same things. Yeah. Yes, the world is different now, so we need more of that than we needed in the 50s and the 60s. But it's, it's, uh, it's not as, as if we had invented any of this, right? So um, a little humility would do us good, a little back to what was important back then when we started would do us good and a little more respect and a little more agility for ourselves. Like, how do we need to change? Something that I like to ask my customers is, and this is coaching clients as well as corporations, how much pain are you willing to endure for the change that you want to see? So what, one question I ask uh, my, my customers, and this could be individual coaching clients or corporations, mm -hmm. is how much pain are you willing to endure for the change that you want to see? And this is an important question to ask myself every single time. Yeah, so what How? is the pain you can obtain to, to change yeah, something? Yeah, right? so, so if, you change something if, if I want a system to transform with my help, I need to undergo a transformation too. Yeah, sure. I can't just go, yeah, 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 you change. You should transform, I yeah. will take 
Like yeah. I will be in a stable yeah. position. So. And that, that, that's, that's the thing that I need to live so that I can go to the leaders of the organization, to the people in power and say, okay, you need to change for the organization to change. And that's how all of these things are connected. And uh, I think we're on to a good cause, but selling hope is, is, is not going to get us much farther. Yeah, but, uh, you know, like, if people, they're really looking in Ukraine, uh, in the organization, we have, like, uh, next addiction to Agile, let's say, yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah, that's so not limited to the Ukraine. Uh, first of all, people call Agile whatever they want to call Agile. True. So they can say, this is Agile, or we do Agile, because, like, you cannot set uh, kind of limits what is Agile, what is no, right? So you cannot say, today you are not Agile, and tomorrow you are Agile. So how to I can measure? because I'm agile. Yeah. <laughs> so I can change my mind at all all the yeah, time. But right? Yes, we are, we are changing. So you you don't have a starting position, right? Yeah. So if we think from the perspective of the continuous change or continuous learning from something, that bring you the ideas to change. Like there is no start and end point, because we Absolutely. learn all, all all the all the days. Uh, like every minute, we are, yeah. we learn some new, right? So even I'm listening, you I'm learning new from what you're saying, right? Yeah. So that's continues obtaining the information, making the decision on this. Absolutely. But like uh, in Ukraine, especially large corporations, they see the agile, like the real solution for uh, the problems they yeah. have. And then our, our duty, I think, our obligation as professionals is that we need to help them understand how to approach it in a way that is actually useful. And I, I see two things that are the reason, the, the, the most common reasons I see for it not working. And one is, uh, insufficient definition of how accountability works in the mm -hmm. new organization and the other is insufficient definition of what, to, what a success should actually look like. Yeah. So it's okay to say we want to be agile, okay. But how will you know it's better than before? So how will you know this is actually serving you? Yeah. These executives who have this wish or come with this request, they have a reason. They, they, they don't have more agile in their yes. in, in their incentive in, in sheet. The, in, yes. in, in, in their in the KPI, it's not a KPI like, for, yes. for a board member of an organization yeah. to, to say you, you need to be agile. That's something that gets translated and then somebody has to be agile. But if we have the conversations with the leadership, with the people in power about how are you actually going to know? Is it time to market? Is it increased quality? Is it increased employee engagement? Is it increased customer satisfaction? Whatever these things are, and how are you measuring them now? And how are you going to know in the future that we're actually making pro progress towards those? And as soon as that frame is there, then we can start measuring our influence so that we actually know we are delivering a good job. Yeah. And we can get the whole company into a mindset of, okay, we are actually thinking about how the thing we're doing is contributing to those goals. I call that strategic awareness. When we get management and then the whole company to st strategic awareness, which ideally means everybody for every task they do knows how is this thing I'm doing now contributing to my company's success. That's a perfect world. Yep. We're not going to get there. But if we, if we help our clients get closer to that and then we use the agility to improve towards it, then the whole thing actually starts making sense. And the other problem can be addressed as well because then we can create accountability. We want to get rid of command and control and that's all fine. But if we replace command with self-organization in a poll system and people doing what they want, basically, and we don't replace control with anything, that will just fall apart. Yep. And then we will see teams who are committing to less and less and less and less work because somebody is requesting them to do something and they don't want to commit to more than they can deliver. And we, we, we just see a system that's kind of, kind of draining energy and that's, that's slowly but surely grinding to a full stop because we unfortunately agile has been designed with perfect adults yeah in mind yeah where so everyone is like caring everybody is caring yes, everybody is engaged, engaged everyone everybody is, is like accountable yeah and, and this it looks like the fairy tale right yeah it's a little like communism in that way yeah, yeah, yeah a little bit socialism i would say or Maybe, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, not so I'm, I'm not a political <laughs> uh, scientist, so I don't know the difference exactly. But um, like assuming that everybody will behave 
we we'll give yes. their best In all plan. the time, and, and we'll, we'll say so if they yes. no, if they and don't. Count right? Everyone else as the best guys yeah. in the world. And unfortunately, this level of personal responsibility, this level of account personal accountability, is not something that is taught in our schools. Yeah. It's not something that is encouraged in our general society. It's not something that people are educated for. Yeah. So the people that are coming into our organizations, they are used to something very different. They are used to control. They are used to lack of responsibility. Right? They yes. used to t t somebody telling them not to smoke, yes. somebody telling them when to pay their tax, somebody yes. telling them to t pay their rent, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So yeah. they, they're used to this. So if we want self-organization to work, if we want these organizations to flourish, we need to put different systems in place where people can learn this responsibility, where they can develop this accountability on a systematic level, where people call each other's behavior out, where we have honest feedback, stuff that we talked about all over the yeah. conference. And then, together with this measurement of, yeah, this is what success looks like, then we can actually work together. Uh, and then all of this agility makes sense. And you know what I fi find out, like, as a very big pain point, actually, in the organization that's trying to make something new, let's say like this, like, people in this organization, they have to relearn, fairly saying, and learn a lot of new stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's probably the big challenge, because when people start all the time learning something new, mm -hmm. and they have the addiction to burnout. So in some kind of at the time, that's a risk because, like, learning something new requires the effort and the energy, right? It's very energy-consuming stuff. So I think I think it depends on the context. Mm -hmm. um, if I put people into a position mm -hmm. where they are motivated, engaged, where they're purposeful and they want to work together, and they enjoy working together, I think they will learn very fast, mm -hmm. and they will enjoy learning a lot. And then, in most cases, this will not lead to burnout, right? This mm -hmm. is what, uh, in the manifesto, is yeah, called true. sustainable, fit, uh, sustainable pace, pace, right? Yes. People, people don't, don't actually need to work more to work faster, right? It's doing the simplest thing that could possibly work. It's doing the, the simplicity, like mm -hmm. leave out everything that's non-essential, etc. Um, so I don't think that learning overburdens people, stress overburdens people, mm -hmm. especially when it's stress combined with, I don't really know how to reach my goals. I'm not really sure yeah, if I'm as empowered as you, s as you mm -hmm. say. I'm still scared that something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And all of these things, they create the stress that leads to burnout. Mm -hmm. Because if I add a lot of stress to a system and then I demand somebody to learn, that's, that's not going to fly. No, no. But if I enable a lot of freedom, Mm -hmm. And if I create uh, conditions for people to be passionate, to like what they do, to like whom they work with, uh, to want to make a difference, I think they will learn very effortlessly and fast. Um, and I've seen that over and over again. It's just really, really hard to create those conditions in an organization that's worked in a very different way for decades, yeah. and where people have habits, and the organization has habits yeah. that are, as we all know, hard to yeah. change. And you're like actually right regarding like we have this mindset actually starting from kindergarten I would say yeah so in the school we are sitting like with the pairs and exactly. we, are, we are afraid to communicate with others and okay I'm writing down my work and I will not give you the yeah. chance to take a look what I'm doing here right no so that's cheating in school yeah, it's called cheating, collaboration it's, at yes. work yeah, it's, it's called collaboration at work but it's teaching at school yeah right so we're and punished as kids for behavior that is expected yeah, yeah. of us. And uh, there are later. like uh, black and white in school. There are good yeah. guys and there are bad guys. Yeah. And there is nothing in the middle. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, and, and we are graded by yes. one person at the top who knows all the answers. Yes, and who owns all the answers. And, and, and the people in some point in time say, hate this person. Mm -hmm. So there is all, all the confrontation in the group that should yeah. sustain actually the self-development yeah so the you're pointing out the reasons for what yeah, i said yeah. at the beginning about lack of respect etc 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 and with these ideas we actually came to the office exactly yeah uh, and we are trying to figure out what is the our fit in the group so we are like good with each other and yeah. we have another group we are not working with mm -hmm. we don't want to share something with them it might yeah. be the another they are the others yeah. or our colleagues on the next table mm -hmm. So whatever else we are trying to like to combine all of the work on our computer and don't take don't take a look to my computer because that's my work and you have your own work yeah. and the KPIs are different 
and then the whole system works in this way, right? Yeah, and then we come in and talk about yeah. collaboration, cross-functional teams yeah. and pair programming. Yeah, and then the guys came and said, you need to collaborate. Enjoy your work together. Uh, disregard your problems. Yeah. You should be, it, and, and, it sh and it should be fun. Yeah. At the end, right? Yeah, exactly. Fuck, what yeah. the hell are you talking yeah. about, right? That's the one funny guy came and told us yeah. what to do, yeah. right? Yeah, then they treat you like a funny joker, yeah. right? It's yeah. it's it's not it's not going to create lasting change. No. And this is the, this is what the next idea, uh, how the next idea came up with is funny. If agile is the solution, I want my problem back. Uh, title. Um, this there was a con conference beginning of this year where we were sitting at breakfast mm -hmm. uh, in the hotel and we were talking about. Uh, all of the new people coming into the community who are asking the same questions all over again and again and again, who some, sometimes seem stupid from our point of view. Because, um, and we were talking about like, what was, what was easy to learn for us 20 years ago or 15 years ago when the whole thing was still fairly small and when there were five or 10 Agile books around instead of a thousand. Um, and I, I remember reading the first books, like the retrospective book was, was coming out, I think it was 2003. Mm -hmm. And for everybody reading it back then, it was very obvious that that was a book by two ladies who had tried several things, and for them this had worked, so they had written it down. Yeah. It was a suggestion to try something out. It was yeah. not a Bible. A Bible. Yeah. It was not a case study. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was not a white paper of yes. like, this is it's how you do this. You can try this or yeah. something else. Yeah, yeah. 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 And this was obvious back then. Similar when we yeah. when we read Ken Beck's book about XP. Yeah. Yes, that That's was a framework, experience. but it was like, hey, try this out, experiment. And there was a community of people who were growing this, mm -hmm. right? We were talking about patterns, and we were talking about learning, and we were all of these things were emerging. And uh, when you, I'm assuming, uh, when you buy a big book about Safe now, all of these things are still in there somewhere, but they're damn hard to find in the thousand yes. pages. And when you think you're starting in 2019 as a scrum master or a product owner or developer with Agile or manager, right? And you get this, like, this is what you should read, <laughs> right? And it's not really about knowledge. So what we then came up with as an idea, that somebody should write a book about the things that are, were obvious to us so obvious. and that are so hard to find. Something that gives people a fast pass to uh, what they really need to know about Agile. So it was a little bit about what you always wanted to know about Agile but never dared to ask kind of thing. But the, if Agile is the solution, about my problem back sounded like a more appealing title. <laughs> um, and then I started collecting uh, things. So I'm working on a book with that title. Mm -hmm. And I, I started collecting what is important, what needs to go in there. And one very obvious uh, element were the scrum values. Like we need to get back to being courageous, nice. being open, being respectful or even loving. I prefer the word love over respect because it has the clearer positive attitude. Um, being focused and being committed. And uh, then I started just gathering my thoughts and had discovered this pattern that I talked about in the keynote yesterday uh, with pause, mm -hmm. play, and forward, forward, like simple tape recorder or, or Spotify player. <laughs> 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 Buttons. I'm, yeah, I, I grew up with tapes, so to, to me, they're tape recorder <laughs> buttons. And uh, just the idea that our minds can pause and we can feel into our context, into our purpose, into ourselves, into our connections. And then we can start playing with our mind and think about alternative options, about alternative solutions, about different ways towards our purpose. And then once we've done the feeling and the thinking, then we can start moving. Instead of just keeping moving and busy, busy, busy yes, and, and trying running. Trying to figure out what's going on on the yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. Running, running in the wrong direction. And this pattern is a pattern that's very, very ingrained in Agile, right? In a Scrum, we would reflect, pause, and reflect on our product and on our ways of working in the review and in the retrospectives. And then we would play with our options in the planning, and then we would go into the next sprint. And, um, so I thought, uh, how about using this pattern to explore these different things? And that's what I basically did yesterday in the keynote. And uh, as far as I know, that was recorded, so that will be in yeah, a different video. So I'm not going to repeat video. it. But yeah, as, soon as, as soon as we'll have this video, I will link this in, into the comments. And 
um, just, just as a very brief summary. So I've explored these different um, values, uh, which are quite emotional, from a feeling and thinking and then a uh, forward point of view. So what does courage feel like? So get us back into feeling our courage, feeling where it is, what it feels like, um, and how we access it in ourselves. And then thinking about how do we apply courage or how don't we apply courage in our work. Because I think Agile requires a lot of courage. Um, and I see a lot of courageous people, but they're not, they're not harnessing their courage in mm -hmm. a conscious way. Uh, they're sometimes running in a direction and they haven't really paused <laughs> <laughs> and reflected. To understand what it um, or um, they are very courageous, but they're lacking the respect. Yeah. And without the respect, the courage doesn't make sense doesn't because make sense. then I just run into people and piss them yes, off. Uh, or if I want to be open, uh, I need to be open to people saying no and people not wanting the change. And then again, I need to be respectful and curious and understand why. And if all of these things come together, then I think the, the way that Agile was supposed to work and the way that it does work when it works <laughs> will kind of come back to the surface. And uh, just to make this clear, this is not speaking against any framework, against any approach, against any, um, any method. It's just about the attitude. Um, and this is the attitude of us bringing this into organizations first and foremost, and leading by example, so that the leaders in those organizations, the people we, um, we reach first, with our message and with our coaching and with our help, that they become leaders like that as well, that they lead with that same attitude. And that we help everybody who, who has a busy, busy, we need to get things done mindset, which is fine, yep. right? But they need to understand how to apply this so that we actually get faster, maybe by being a little less busy, but by definitely still delivering and still getting things done. And uh, so far, my experience is, as a community, what I'm seeing in, in the wild, and again, this is no critique, and this is definitely not true for everyone, um, we can get a lot better at inviting people into the right conversations uh, so that things actually start moving instead of lip service agile and broken agile and fake agile and dark scrum and whatever is all out there. Oh, dark scrum is probably um, one of the interesting books. Like that's yeah, but but came out. I I, I I want to work on the alternative. Yes. Uh, I, I I want to work on um, bringing this working thing into in, into the organizations, li liberating people from from the old way of working, and we can't liberate pe liberate people uh, by forcing them to do something that doesn't work. Yeah, and uh, you know, in Ukraine especially, I see like. Uh, we, we don't have the agile market uh, mm -hmm. as uh, it is in the US or in Europe, right? We don't have a lot of cases in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. The companies just start experimenting yeah. and they like taking a look to ING. Like the mm -hmm. banks, they love ING. They see mm -hmm. ING in one hand, a Spotify in the other hand. Mm -hmm. They've never been in ING or Spotify, mm -hmm. but they, they read about this. There is a lot of the YouTube videos made by ING, right? Mm -hmm. About how they transform something to something. So are your banks then firing all their managers? Uh, no, unfortunately. See. Because that's the key thing ING yeah, did. And that's yeah. not something I would ever recommend to a client. Yeah. And uh, that's uh, not something ING is saying uh, from the scene when they actually uh, are making the speech. OK. It's, it's, it's what I read first. Yeah. So uh, today, uh -huh. there is no words about this. Interesting. OK. And uh, I, I'm just like one week ago, I've been in Munich uh -huh. and last conference. And there was the speech from ING there because ING, uh, like, <laughs> they all. Okay, were. just if you if you don't know that, uh, <laughs> when ING decided to go agile, the thing that they did, and it was legal in uh, in the Netherlands, they couldn't do that in in some other countries, but that was the head, what their headquarters were. They fired everybody in a manager position, and they published a list of open positions for the new organization they want to create, and they only rehired those, uh, those where they thought that they would work with the right mindset, whatever that means. <laughs> And uh, for the effect they wanted and the success they got, I think that was an appropriate method. 
but I also think it's an extremely violent and an extremely risky strategy to change an organization. Yeah. Can work. Can work. Um, and if you want to read up on similar stories where managers have been re uh, have been invited to find a new way of working in the organization, there's a company called Favi in uh, France. They have had a big transformation several decades ago, and uh, their cases uh, published in Reinventing Organizations, and in another book called Freedom Freedom Inc. And uh, their story was that the new CEO came in, mm -hmm. and he told from one day to the next without telling anybody before. He made a speech to all the staff and says, "Everybody who has a manager." position in their title today, you will not be managing from now. From now. You can't tell anybody what to do anymore from now, ever. But you have one year of full pay where you can figure out what to do what and to how do to in, create in value in the organization. Yeah. And I think all of them, or definitely the vast majority of them, found a new position which they actually liked more than what they'd done before. So that's another less risky way. And again, this is not something that I would recommend to every client. Yes. And I have worked with a, a big German company uh, two years ago where the whole senior staff, like C-level plus VPs, uh, was traveling to the Netherlands, visiting ING, and they were in awe about what these people had achieved, and then they came back and did nothing. Nothing. <laughs> because they had been told that <laughs> the managers had been fired, and they didn't dare to do that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, find your own way. Yeah. And Back to what I said earlier, discover or decide how much pain are you willing to take for the organization that you want or for the change that you want to see. And uh, I, I don't think they have to decide it once. No, it. no. That's a continuous decision because it's not like That's a, a very good point, yeah. In, in the, uh, today, we have to decide, okay, we are okay with 2% uh, of pain mm -hmm. today, tomorrow we're going to make this and we've done. So that's a maximum pain we can. So Absolutely, and so it can be an incremental iterative process, right? That's just crazy as an agile editing. idea. <laughs> so that you say, okay, what if, if we take this painful step, mm -hmm. how much of a success do we see if we take that painful step? And you can do experiments, right? You can yeah. say, okay, may maybe we can make that change for three months and then roll back if it doesn't work. Not every change can be rolled back, yes. but a lot of changes can be rolled yeah. back. And uh, if you like, take the painful steps step by step and actually see the results. But again, this requires that we have an overarching sense of what does success look like? Yes. How do we measure progress? And How do we know that the three months are a step in the right direction? And they shouldn't expect the immediate uh, like result, right? Because when you start doing something new, usually mm -hmm. you have a worse result than you had before. Because it, it can Possible. easily go down. But in a, in, because in, you need in a to learn, right? How true. to do stuff. Uh, so but I do think that in a cons in, in a context yes. environment, yeah. you can set up an experiment yeah. where you see positive results even in three months, even oh, with a course. significant change. Sure. And uh, that doesn't guarantee that it will work everywhere without slowing down something or without reducing some numbers. Uh, but I do think we can get valid prediction for uh, bigger changes by smaller experiments. Yeah. Uh, and this is exactly sure. where the, the expertise of all the organizational design people, all the organizational or executive coaches, et cetera, et cetera, us who have seen a few stories before, where that expertise comes in. And I think that way we can deliver a lot more value with our expertise and our coaching than with telling them how to use a certain framework. Yeah, sure. I agree with you. Uh, thank you for this great conversation. That was like a very hard topic, especially like... Uh, because in, in Ukraine, I see all of these challenges, let's say like this, with the framework stuff and with application of some specific stuff on top of everything, uh, multiplication of uh, a Spotify framework without even like, understanding what is the framework mean yeah, and what yeah, is yeah. the Spotify, right? Yeah. Uh, like the people even don't ask themselves, are we actually doing something like Spotify do? Yeah. Or maybe you're doing something else, right? And it's very, I, I see a very similar uh, trend in the yeah. in the systems architecture, software architecture yeah. field, where lots of people try to apply microservices to their architecture, yeah, everywhere. where that totally doesn't make sense. Yeah, I agree. So, so if you. microservices don't work for your architecture, <laughs> the Spotify model is unlikely to work for your organization. <laughs> that's that's one hundred percent true. 
So I'm a, I'm also ex engineer, so yeah. I, I, I feel this pain so all over yeah. every Con time. Con Conway's law, yes. right? The system yes. is always an image of the yeah. organization or creating or organization, it. Organization, yeah. yeah. And if it's a microservice organization, so it's more or less you will have the microservice architecture in the software. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. It was a very nice uh, conversation. You're welcome. Thank you for the uh, opportunity and thank you for the invitation to the great conference. Thank you. If you don't know where to spend next year September, go to Agile <laughs> Rock <laughs> conference in Kiev. It was yeah. amazing. And we'll definitely share the knowledge uh, from Olaf and his presentation and his speech. So we're going to have everything on, on our YouTube channel so you can subscribe, uh, take a look and uh, watch the videos. I also will uh, send a couple of uh, uh, your uh, speeches that you made before mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to the comments so cool. people can take a look. Perfect. Thanks, uh, uh, thanks you guys for watching. I hope we, uh, you enjoyed uh, our conversation. Subscribe to our channel. See you next time. Thank you.